Hi everybody, welcome back to Dave's World, your home for automotive mechanical entertainment. So what we're going to be doing today is adding methanol injection to a 2003 Jetta. Uh, this should work on a 1999 up to 2005 Jetta with a 1.8 liter. I mean, it could work on any car, but this one specifically, we're going to be showing how to tap into the engine without having to really modify the intake system. So if you've been following along, you've been watching me install a K04. It's a larger turbo where you're actually using Audi and Jetta factory parts to give more power to your Jetta. So along the way, I've had a few problems. I've had a few awesome things happen. And currently the car is at the point where it's actually almost completely finished. And I'm doing some added security by putting methanol injection in. The reason why in the winter, the car had a lot of power and drove great. But when the summer came, the car started having a little bit of an issue because of intake temperatures. What was happening, it was actually changing the timing based on the temperature outside and the car was losing a little bit of power. I have this happen on a couple of my cars. It's because sometimes your intake temperatures can get up to maybe 200 degrees and it backs down the timing or advances the timing to compensate. What I wanted to do is since I'll be giving the car back, I wanted to add a little bit of security and I want to put a system in the car that's going to consistently drop the temperatures. You should actually only be seeing two digit temperatures whenever the methanol injection kicks in. What do I mean by that? If it's 100 degrees outside and you kick in the methanol, it potentially will drop down to 50 degrees. And if it's really cold outside and the methanol kicks in, you could potentially have almost 20 degree intake temperatures. The colder the intake charge, the more the horsepower you get out of the car. So I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install a 50-50 water system and also show you how to get it up to an 80-20 methanol injection system. I don't like to use 100% methanol because you have to actually change all your lines over to stainless and change a lot of the things, including the pump over to a, more of a stainless system with stainless bushings. At least with this way, you get to use a cheaper system and get a little bit of a boost out of your methanol system. So first things first, let's go to the car and I'll show you the type of kit we bought. Okay, so this is the snow performance kit. Uh, we ended up getting the one that has the boost controller built in. That way you can do everything while you're on the go. Luckily, this car does have a boost gauge, so we're just gonna remove the existing boost gauge and install this one. This will read the boost level and also power the methanol system. Uh, this is the injection pump. We're gonna have to find a place to put this injection pump on the frame somewhere. This is the reservoir tank for the methanol. I'm gonna try and find a place to fit this, or what I'll be doing is using the factory washer fluid container. I don't know which one I wanna use yet, but we'll figure it out as we go along. That's the 50-50 mixture of methanol. I bought pretty much a year's supply. And this is a throttle plate that actually puts the injector for this system right after the throttle body. The reason I bought this is because a lot of people who run methanol before the throttle body, specifically on Jettas, actually have problems with the throttle body getting stuck because of the methanol. I wanted to be after the throttle body, so that's why we ended up buying that as well. Uh, so let's do this. Let's pop the hood and see what kind of space we have under the hood. Okay, here we are under the hood of the Jetta. Uh, this is where this adapter goes. It literally puts a methanol injector right behind the throttle body. I don't know if it has to go this way or upward, but this is one project. And then this is the tank I want to use. I don't know if I want to run this tank or if I want to run the washer fluid. Luckily in this kit, the controller we have actually has a low fluid switch. So when this runs low, the gauge will actually tell you you need fluid. So if it didn't have that, I would have focused on the washer fluid container. But at least this way, what I can do is use the parts that came in the kit. I just don't know where this would fit. Okay, so... I had two ideas that involve moving the battery. If I modify the battery tray, I can shift the battery either three inches this way or three inches this way, which means this can either sit here or sit in between here and the battery. There's definitely room for the tank next to the fender and there is room for the battery if I just go right there. And if I modify the battery tray, I'll be able to fit everything. It's actually the next day. I ended up getting sidetracked because my new quarter panel showed up for the Corvette wide body. What that allowed me to do was actually think about how I wanted to make this work. What I want to do is modify this existing battery tray. I'm going to cut basically right here, and then I want to cut this right there. 
This will allow the battery to still hook in place and then I can clamp it down and it'll give me enough room to put the methanol container in place and I can use the existing bolt holes to mount a bracket to hold it up. The other thing I might be doing is I might actually build some sort of support on this part just in case the weight of the battery makes this tip a little bit, I'll have a way to support it. So first things first, I wanna basically just cut here and I wanna cut about there. So let's get set up for that. I decided to retain the other two bolts just to help with the battery's weight. And then I'm gonna mount the bracket underneath for the tank. Actually, that's supporting the battery pretty good. Let me show you guys real quick. So we're basically mounting the battery halfway onto the tray. So now we have room for the tank. Let's test fit the tank real quick. So yeah, so now all I need to do is build some brackets to mount the tank in a permanent spot. And then I could feed the lines from underneath. Okay, so I laid the bracket down that I just made and I'm gonna put the tray on top of it. I think I accidentally welded it to the car, so we're in good shape. Okay, so I took the liberty of cutting and drilling out another bracket. What I want to do is have this one go across the back of the tank, and I need to figure out the tank's height and location. battery will pretty much sit there and this will pretty much sit right there it's almost perfect okay what I'm doing right now is I'm actually marking the metal so I can figure out where I want to place it and weld it so I'm leaving marks so when I take the tank off, I can tack weld it in place without melting the tank. I think what I'm gonna do is this episode's getting kind of long. I'm gonna turn this into a tank episode on how you would install a tank in the Jetta for the methanol injection. And then we'll continue on with the pump and then the throttle body adapter on a later date. Okay, I have my marks. Let's set this up so I can finish welding. I have my mark here, I have my mark right there. I'm also gonna weld studs into this so I can just slap the tank on, tighten it up, and I'm done. Ooh, that's hot. Okay. Uh, I have to re-weld the bottom of there. I want to weld the bottom of here. And then we'll clean this up and paint it.
Okay, the bracket's dry. I'm gonna get it in place. Okay, so the bracket's built, the bracket's painted, the battery tray is modified, and the battery is installed. Let me show you guys up close how everything looks. So I think this is a pretty good spot. Um, maybe what I can do is, let's just see if we have a clearance issue. No, not at all. I, I can clearly see that the cap is nowhere near the hood when it closes, so we're good there. So our bracket puts the tank in a nice spot. It's far enough away from things. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. The battery is in a nice spot now. It's actually still gonna have a hole down when I permanently install everything. And then what I wanna do is run the pump directly below this tank. And the good thing is I'm gonna put the low level float either here or here. So the gauge inside the car will let us know when we're low on fluid. This is actually a pretty perfect setup and I didn't have to modify the car too much, which makes me very happy. Okay, so if you guys have been watching my channel since day one, you know that I like to structure my videos a little bit shorter. I don't like putting out really long 30 to 45 minute videos showing everything I did. I'd rather do everything in shorter videos so you can pinpoint the stuff that you need to look at or the stuff you enjoyed watching along the way because my channel is an entertainment channel when it comes to automotive stuff. Uh, so what I've been doing with this car is I'm trying to make things as idiot proof as possible uh, for someone driving the car. The reason being is if it were my car, there could be something that's not quite right and it's no big deal because if I have a problem, I could just park the car or if it gives me a headache while I'm driving, I could pull over, fix it and go. But I'm giving this car back to my friend and his wife is gonna be driving it, which is why I'm doing things a certain way on the car. I wanted to be able to have a tank under the car that's separate from the washer fluid. I didn't want her to have to not be able to use the wipers during maybe a snowstorm. I also wanted a way for her to know that it's low on methanol, so luckily the gauge that we have will tell her, so I'm going to be installing the low-level switch. I want to make the car easy for her to drive. There's a reason I put an air-fuel ratio gauge in the car. I could have put a turbo on the car and said, here's the car. She may have been driving along with a bad air-fuel ratio, which could potentially damage the engine, and I'm at least going to teach her what the numbers mean. Uh, so when she's driving, she has everything she needs to make sure that her custom-built car is not going to be a problem. That's why I did things a certain way. And I like to shorten the videos down because even for the owners of the car, they can go check out stuff that I'm doing along the way, which is kind of fun for them. They're not actually building the car, but they get to watch the build on every little part that I'm doing. I'm glad everybody who subscribed to my channel is enjoying the process as well. I appreciate each and every one of you. I love it when you guys comment and keep in touch with me. The support I have gotten since day one has been amazing, which is why I enjoy making these videos for everybody. Every one of you pump energy into me and make me want to continue on the build on this car. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And I'm hoping that you guys enjoyed the Dave's World YouTube channel. And I'm trying a lot of new things on the channel. Hopefully you guys are enjoying everything I'm doing and have a very nice day.